All right. Welcome back, everybody. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to another Monday Night Monster Jam. Yes, we're back. Episode 12 already. We're rolling through these things so quick, it's hard to believe. Can't believe it's Monday again. Already. <laughs> yeah, again. Yeah. <laughs> I'm joined with uh, my host here and the guy that's running things in the background, Sam Catarasano. Hello, everybody. Can't do the show without Sam. He is the other half that makes this thing roll. So thanks to him, he's always uh, killing it for us with the camera work, amazing camera work and everything. So we thank him for helping out because that makes the show go much smoother. Um, so welcome. Uh, hopefully you guys are having a good Monday. Hopefully it's going smooth, not too crazy. Um, I had a little bit of a... Crazy Monday, but not too bad, you know. Actually, pretty pretty chill. Just had to get some stuff done, as always. Uh, yeah. So we're here tonight. We have got a great show tonight. We are going to be getting into painting techniques. We're going back to the painting a little bit. I'm going to show you guys some weathering techniques that I like to do. Um, I've done this quite a bit on many different things at work, on my mask, on bus, everything. And this uh, was recommended, uh, thrown out to me the other night um, by a good friend, John Eubank. Thank you, John, for suggesting this because I think it is a great technique to share. I'm looking forward to this. It's going to be a nice, easy demo for you guys, something that's fun. It can add a great look and effect to anything you're working on that, that this kind of thing would work for, which you'll see what it is. Um, Yes. Uh, let's see. What did I do? What did you do over your weekend, Sam? Oh man, I did a lot. I actually uh, Saturday went to uh, this brewery out in um, kind of like the Sherman Oaks area. It's called Peasant Life. Mm. Uh, really cool. Got to catch up with a couple of my friends. Got to celebrate one of their birthdays. Awesome. Uh, and then yesterday, Sunday, I got together with a group of other friends of mine. We just went to the pool, drank some beers at this little steakhouse. It was really awesome. good. Sun for like five or six hours. Awesome. 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 Sounds like a good weekend. Good yep. weekend. Yeah. So uh I did a um for those of you guys local to uh Burbank, California, by any chance, and you like model kits or resin kits, if you didn't know this, now you're gonna know. There is a club that I belong to that is a lot of fun called the Alternate Universe Model Club. And, or is it alternative? Uh, I'm probably going to mess it up. Anyway, you can look it up on Facebook. Um, it's a great group of people. We get together usually once a month, of course, because of COVID. It's been put off for a few years. We just had our first um, get together last Saturday. Uh, I brought somebody new uh, to join. And uh, it's cool to get new people coming. Uh, it's a good place if you're looking for rare model kits or cool collectibles, things like that. Um, but it's all model kits, obviously. And uh, it's cool to get together and just chit chat with the guys and, you know, share paint techniques or talk whatever. There's always donuts there, which is really good um, <clears throat> if you eat donuts and uh, drinks and stuff like that. But it's cool. It's a lot of fun. It's for a few hours every sat uh, Saturday morning. Not every Saturday, sorry. Once a month. I, I think they're going to have it again next month. I, you have to check this the, the page, the Facebook page. So check that out. That's a great thing. Um, I enjoy it. You know, I usually go there and sell model kits or talk shop pretty much. Anyway, it's a great time. So uh, what else? Let's see. Tonight we have a great artist share, of course. They're all great. None of them are bad. But this is a special one in a way for me. Longtime friend, good guy. I'm more than happy to share his art, of course, and been looking forward to it. So stay tuned, 7 o'clock, for that one. Um, and what else? We got questions at 7. And there we go. I think we got to get right into it now, don't we? That means I have to work. I have to work for you guys. <laughs> nah, it's fun. It's all fun. It's not work. Okay, so tonight's Monster Jam session is going to be 
on a bust, resin bust that I already have somewhat painted. Um, but what I want to share with you guys is a technique of weathering where um, I show you how to rust and stain and texture and metalize and use all these cool little tricks to make things look ancient and old and weathered and creepy and weird. So this works for masks. This works for resin busts like this. It works for maquettes. It'll work for armor, anything you want to do. Okay. So now I've already base coated the main piece that we're working on. The main piece we're going to work on is the jaw here. So if you're looking at this piece now, it's we're not really working on anything with this skin or the armor, the space suit armor here. This is a model kit that I sell called the Necro Mutant. These are available on my website. You can buy them. It's a nice size bust um, and a lot of fun to paint, a lot of options and things that you can do. Uh, and there's even a piece in the back here, a plug, which you can fit some wires and have it look like he's disconnected himself. He's like a these are like necro mutant foot soldiers. So I don't know from some army from planet. Um, I don't know planet whatever. Anyway, so um, anyway, the 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 jaw piece, this 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 under metal jaw connected, which everyone loves to say oh it's trap jaw from he-man no it's not trap jaw from he-man stop saying that it's not trap jaw trap jaw had a helmet he's purple he's green and all that get out of here with that you guys gotta stop seeing things for for just copies this is uh no i get it, it trap jaw had an under jaw it looks like trap jaw i get it um anyway um i always you know th the whole idea behind this bust uh just to do some background on it is that basically this was my idea of like, what if I took some sort of Frankenstein space mutant, you know, mixed with metal parts or something or a space suit. And that's what this was all about. You know, um, I didn't reference trap jaw or even look at trap jaw, although I was very familiar with trap jaw because as a kid, I loved He-Man of course. So, that may have come into play a little bit there, but um, I should have done his upper thing metal and then his low. I don't know, whatever. So anyway, here we go. And so basically what I've done is I've base coated the jaw in a weird, funky green, which you're probably going like, why did he do that? That's so weird. Like what? How's that supposed to look like aged metal? You're going to see. You're going to see. Just hang tight. Hang tight. Trust me. So, um, <clears throat> What I've done is taken some color here, and this is, uh, and you can use Delta Ceram coats. You could use cheap. Uh, I usually, for this process, use very cheap paints, like like uh, you know hobby cra uh, craft paints. You know, you could just get this color. Uh, you don't have to mix this color up, is what I'm saying. But I did use Citadel's uh, color, which is Goss Blaster Green, which just sounds cool because that sort of fits him right goss blaster green how can you go wrong with that such a cool name so i base coated it first just just to give us a jump start because you guys don't really need to see me base coating there's no magic there i took a brush i brushed it on done that's all you need to know <laughs> simple 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 now um what i have here and there's many ways to do this you don't need to buy a weathering kit but i do have I just so happen to have a weathering kit by Vallejo for this very technique. Now, it comes with instructions, and it comes with all these colors you're, I'm showing you here, and it comes with these instructions, you know, rust, stain, and streaking, and all that. And you can follow these instructions, but um, usually what I do is I go like this and throw it away because I could give a shit about those instructions. So I just look at the colors and make it up. So there we go. <laughs> yeah. No, the instructions are actually pretty good. So if you want to weather army tanks and whatever, that's great. But we're not weathering army tanks. We're weathering monsters. So all I care about is what colors are in here. Um, so there's some uh, dark browns, 
some rusty oranges, rusty yellows, you know, things like that in here. Um, oh, I do need to grab one thing. I'll be right back. I did forget something. Of course, every show wouldn't be this good if I didn't forget something and walk off camera. All right, while you're doing that, I'll turn these towards the camera so they can potentially read, like, the names and stuff. All right. If they want. Yeah. Now, all these colors that I'm using, um, you can uh, just use whatever you've got around. It's, it doesn't matter. You can use any rust tones or any yellowy rust tones, or you can use dark browns, whatever you want. You don't have to use this brand. But if you want to use these exact colors, you can buy the kit. Um, they even sell this kit, I believe, at uh, uh, where was it? Where it Hobby Lobby? Places like that, or Amazon. I'm gonna shake up these bottles because the paint, these have sat around a little bit. So the paints are, you know, sort of uh, separating. So, and what do we have here? We've got, let's see, we've got orange, brown, dark rust, chocolate, um, light rust, wood, Orange rust. I mean, rust you need to do rust. Jesus. Um, and what is this? Oxidoclara. Uh, light rust. Whatever that's supposed to be. Light rust. Okay. So, um, yeah. So, here we go. So, the first thing I'm probably going to do. You know what? I'm going to do. I'm going to walk off camera one more time. Because, you know, don't get prepared for these shows. They're always... <laughs> Andrew Valentine says, need that Vortex mixer? The what? Vortex mixer? What's that? I don't know. Maybe you meant to say Vortex mix mixer? Vortex mix oh, Vortex mixer? Yeah. I don't know. Like, need that Vortex mixer. What? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So there won't be any airbrushing. That's some good news, I guess. Maybe. Maybe not. Maybe you guys want to see airbrushing. But no, this is uh, all brush techniques tonight. I had to grab this, the sponge, the sea sponge. Because we are going to use it. <clears throat> so. <laughs> trusty sea sponge. This is just a little chunk I have laying around. So. I'm going to move these colors to the side for a sec. Here, I'll, I'll try to remember to tell you guys every color I'm using. Oh, one of the things I had to grab. And you might want to get one of these off Amazon. These bad boys are genius awesome liquid chrome in a pen and i'll show you what we're going to do with this later this will be the last final little touch that makes it look killer so i'll show you but you can buy those on amazon um okay so now just to uh you know so we've base coated this with this color right i took this color out of the bottle didn't thin it or anything i just brushed it on yada 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 Right, I let it dry. So that's step one. Now we're going to get into step two. I'm going to take this wood tone. I don't know why there's a, a wood tone in there. Well, I do know why, but it's kind of strange, I guess. But it's like a rusty, light rusty tone or something. I'm going to use a couple different rust tones here. And um, hmm, might have to thin this a little bit. It's pretty... Pretty opaque. So let's see here. I'm going to put a little water and thin that out on my plate. Are you able to see that, Sam? Mm -hmm. Okay. My two, two bunched up here. Oh, you're good. Because the micro, I just thought maybe the microphone's in the way. So what I'm doing, if you're like, what is he doing? What I'm doing is um, thinning out some of this color. And I'm just going to do like a general, little bit of general modeling with the sponge. Just to give a little light undertone texture to, to this piece. And again, we're just focusing on this metal jaw. I know it doesn't look like metal. I know it looks like your grandma's antique furniture outside um, that she bought at her 
thrift store venture or whatever. I get it. You're like, that's not metal to me. It looks like some kind of seafoam green thing. Well, you'll see. You'll see. It's going to look like metal. It's going to look like heavy metal, in fact, which is even better than metal. Heavy metal. <laughs> okay. Dad joke. I'm a dad, so I got to give dad jokes. All right. So, see, I just do a light, light texturing with this. This is nothing special. You could probably barely even see what's going on. It, it does kind of slightly color shift a little bit, you know, makes it a little more green. But it's like a light underlayer, basically. That's all that is. So that's step one. And you know, there's no like right or wrong way to do this, by the way. I mean, you could you can just make up your own steps that you want to do by just playing around with these techniques. And you'll come up with what you like and, and in what order you like it in. Because that's this is this this technique is fun because you could just almost do whatever in a way. <clears throat> Alright. So now I'm gonna switch to a little bit of this orange rust actually you know what i'm gonna correct myself we're gonna go to sorry about that guys we're gonna go to dark rust and dark rust isn't rusty looking in any way at all it's just a very dark brown uh as you're gonna see right now okay now what are we gonna do with that color oh, i don't know let's find out so, I take this color on my brush here. Although I almost feel like this isn't dark enough as I want it, but I think maybe it maybe it's darker than I realize. So what I'm going to start looking for now is I'm going to start trying to add what would be like an under layer or that first layer of 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 the metal. Uh, starting to corrode and chip. So I take this brush, and Sam, let me know if you're able to see all this crazy tiny stuff here. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So what I'm going to do is sort of just be real loose, and you have to kind of imagine that you're what you're doing is adding paint that is chipped off. Like the paint has now gone, whatever this was, painted like metal or what have you, now it's turned to this patina, right? It's a patina tone. And now I'm gonna start adding all that under chipping where the paint chipped and flaked off and became and started to become this dark rust. This is the first layer. I go along the edges. I kind of let the edge of the brush catch the edges on its own naturally. And then I start adding some shapes. And, and you can just make this up. It can be, you know, whatever you want. Little island shapes. Uh, you know, just make it up. Have Just have fun with it. You know, don't. Try not to, when you do this technique, try not to get too uh, tight about it. Just kind of go for it. Um, that makes sense. Oh, I hate that. I just said that makes sense. Does that make sense? Oh, I hate when people say that. God damn, why'd I say that? <laughs> uh, I just saw a post by my buddy, Mike Elizalde. He said that too. Oh, that's a pet peeve of mine. I hate when people say, makes sense. Uh, yeah, it did. It's English, isn't it? I, I understand what you said. Oh, that one drives me nuts. Sorry, guys. Yeah, I'm just thinking. Oh, I hate that one. There's one too. It's, uh, did you understand that? Oh, my That's God. Oh, like my gosh, man. Yes. No, I didn't. Explain it one more time. <laughs> oh, that one I hate. Drives me crazy. All right. Oh, you're going to find out what my pet peeves are. That's just the way it goes. Monday night pet peeves. No. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I'm just, you know, I'm just rusting away here with this dark rusty tone. Now what I try not to do is do it everywhere. You know, I mean, I'm, well, I'll try not to, I get a little carried away myself. It's so fun to do this. You know, you can, next thing you know, you're like, Oh my God, I put way too much 
on. What did I do? Oh boy. Um, and you know, studying real rust and things is is a good thing to do. Um, because obviously, then you can see how things really get weathered. You know, army tanks or whatever you want, whatever you know, old old rusty buildings. Um, another good one is uh is to to study things like uh. Uh, tombstones, how they weather, you know, uh, it's, it's funny how our brains tell us one thing, but then it's another. So for example, when you, when you look at old buildings and I've had to do this a lot for my job, uh, cause we're, we're really always trying to fill in the realism side of, of statue painting, um, you know, mixed with comic book and whatnot. So I always, have to study these things a little bit and it's funny like tombstones and 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 buildings old buildings you you know you would always think to yourself well all the cracks get really dark i guess and then everything's light on top it's all dry it's not how it actually works the 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 top layer gets dark and gritty and the cracks usually stay very light and and white and and stuff or sandy and uh so you look at old buildings you know uh with uh especially like the gargoyles you know the, the, the buildings with all the gargoyles on them uh, they're real black on top like sooty looking like really black and weathered and then all the cracks are light and because you know uh so it's interesting you know and to uh tombstones and things are the same way you know there's all this, the way weathering, natural weathering works. It's it's interesting because it's not always what your brain tells you, or thinks it is. It's it's uh sometimes the opposite. Uh, anyway, so I try to apply those things to my uh, my little brain computer brink of no, of of knowledge, <laughs> painting knowledge. So. Then of course you can just play around with um, different techniques within that world. So here we go. I'm just playing around here, just trying to find some interesting shapes and things with this very dark color. Necromutants, man, they're they're known for getting rusty, these rusty jaws, and then they bite people, and then you need a massive tetanus shot. I don't know. <clears throat> so, yeah, wouldn't want to get clamped down on by one of these things. I also picture these things like, you know, super big and tall and over grown and massive you know so if this thing bit you it would bite you through the torso or something big crazy foot soldier for some alien race or something i don't know just making shit up uh i love the it's funny i was just looking at um some stuff over the weekend. I, when I went to Monster Palooza <clears throat> last weekend or whatever, um, uh, you know, one of my good friends there, uh, uh, Steve Wang, had some awesome aliens on display. Um, and he's always doing like his take on what, you know, some of these supposed real aliens look like. And, um, you know, he had a re the reptilian race one. Really cool. Um, I always like that kind of stuff, you know, thinking about uh, different things that could be. It always gets the imagination flowing. You can see how this is starting to already look very weathered and, and crazy weird. Um, so now on the, the bottom here, which, you know, I mean, I'm not going to concentrate too crazily here because, I mean, well, you, you know, I'll do the bottom, but I for the demo point of the demo it's probably not that necessary but you've seen enough but uh you know i'll just do it for the hell of it anyway 
don't know if you guys uh, out there like aliens. I've been trying to gear up towards sculpting something like that because it's something I've been avoiding for some reason. I don't know why. Sometimes there's certain types of characters I'll, I avoid. Uh, maybe I'm just not as interested or don't have a design in mind. But um, I keep going back to thinking about doing like a an alien gray, you know, my version of that or some sort of type of realistic thing that alien that could exist or something. But I don't know. Anyway, I don't even know what the hell I'm talking about. But if, I guess if you, what I'm saying is if you guys like that kind of stuff too, chime in. Love to hear, you know, some stuff about that. It's always fun. Um, anyone watch Ancient Aliens? <laughs> this TV show. <laughs> you know, it's a fun one. It's interesting to think, though, like, you know, were these things here before us, maybe? You know, there's got to be other life out there on the on other planets that's for sure i do believe that have they visited us i don't know that i don't, I don't know i i am one of those like i have to see it to believe it but um wouldn't surprise me right because like i mean how vast this universe is there's got to be life somewhere else and they've got necro mutant army foot soldiers like these guys that will eat you to death Anyway, I'm just showing you guys where this kind of came from. <laughs> All right, so, you know, you can go crazy. Like I said, you got to watch out because you don't want to overdo it too much. Mm, let's go. Let's make one of these teeth a little more insane. So there's some weathering here. You know, I like to tie it in a little here and there. Just like model with the... Basically, just modeling with a brush. All right, I'm kind of happy with that. I think that's good. So that's the first layer that we've got there. And I'm going to clean my brush out. So that's cool. You can see I just did that all with one brush, one color. I didn't thin it or anything. I just played around with the edging. You know, go around the sharp edges and pick out where you want some chipped paint. Um, and you can just kind of add that in. So there we go. All right. So now I'm going to come in with some kind of a light orange rust here. And what I think I'm going to use this for is a little bit of a thinner color. I'm going to use this to kind of map out where the rust stains are or run down the surface a little bit. To indicate that. Oh, you know what? Jeez, I almost forgot. Hold on. Before I go into that, guys, I almost forgot to do the back piece. I need to do the back piece, too. Hey, he's got this plug, his necro plug. So, might as well do that real quick. Can't forget that. So, again, I'm just going to pick out uh, some edges here. With the brush, sometimes depending on how you hold the piece, you can um, get a little better uh, edge out of it. You know, catch the edge is what I'm trying to say. Catch that a little better. Hold it this way. And yeah, you should just be like totally loose with this. The looser you are, the the better for sure. I'm just playing here just. Because you got to imagine, like, okay, what, you know, where's the wet, where's the wear and tear going to be on this and why? You know, obviously, if this edge that sticks out is chipped first, then maybe it chips away much more than the rest of it. I don't know. You know, all these, these, these edges here. So we'll start with that, that idea, and then go from there. Would you also consider, like, maybe he's the type kind of person who would pick at it? I don't know, because, like, these are, like, 
to me the well may, i mean maybe who knows you know like he's dude that's funny because it's almost like makes me think of um uh texas chainsaw massacre part two you know where um what's his name what's the character uh, uh holy shit he's like he's just sitting there scratching his head um i can't believe him i'm gonna blank on the most like important things sometimes in this show i already know i don't even try anymore shout out in the chat if you know what's his name god i should know it i'm a freaking huge fan of that movie um not leatherface you know it's his brother chop top chop top oh my god why can't i think of that i'm so mad at myself now (laughs) i'm a loser horror fan yeah chop top um yeah you know he sort of has this hook and he takes the flesh off his around where his uh under his wig he's got like a a metal plate on his head so he you know leatherface comes out attacking this girl and smash smashes him in the head you damn my plate you idiot well he says something else but i'll try to be a little kind to the kids watching if there's any <laughs> um yeah anyway you know kids you're gonna watch texas chainsaw part two tonight um so yeah anyway the uh no i kind of because you know i kind of picture these guys as like they're mindless they only know one thing and they're just programmed to kill and so i don't think they think much you know in a way they're just like they just go but yeah that's i mean you know the more see the more you make up about this stuff the better because the more you can just get into like that world Especially when I was sculpting it, you know, that that's the fun part to think about all that stuff. Like it would have been cool. Like now that you're saying that, it'd be cool to give it a little chop top like plate here. Like like it would have been what could have enhanced the sculpture is to like bring this idea into the head and, and I could have like cut away here and had part of that or it connected back into this. Like there's all this metal underneath the skin. It would have shown a better idea of skin flesh being pulled over. That I mean Maybe I'll have to do Necro Mutant Part Two, man. Is that uh, what you're just saying right now? It's spawning some really, you know, great ideas I could do with this character. So, Necro Mutant Two, coming your way, guys. <laughs> I did this one for a class once as well. In fact, this bus I think was from that class. I never finished it. Chris Boston says, "Lick my plate, you." Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. Oh my God, so good. I love that. <laughs> Chop top, man. I have a funny story about the actor Bill Bill Mosley, right? Yeah. So, Bill, one time I was at I was this is Monster Palooza two thousand. I'm gonna take a wild guess here. It was the Pasadena show, but I think it was sixteen or seventeen. I, I forget. I, I believe 16, I want to say. Well, you know, I was in, you know, when, I, when you're at your table, sometimes you don't recognize who comes up to your table, you know? Believe it or not, you're so in your own world and you're talking to so many people throughout the day and it's so busy that you you sometimes just don't even... You just catch who's standing in front of you. And well, of course, one of these occasions, Bill Mosley had walked up to my table and he was standing there, uh, you know, looking at some mini busts I had, these little painted busts or whatever. And I just didn't, I I just wasn't paying attention. You know, I, I didn't, I wasn't like really looking at who was standing in front of my table. So because I would have been like, oh, my God, you know, Chop Top, you know, Bill Mosley. <laughs> anyway, he came over and he wanted to buy something, but he was like, oh, let me go. You know, he asked the price and I said, oh, is, you know, they're this, they're this much. I think they were like these $250 bus. I mean, he really liked the piece or whatever. And uh, and then he and then he goes, oh, well, let me go sign some more autographs and I'll be back <laughs> to buy it. And I was like, I remember thinking like, what's he what is he doing? Because, like, you know, most of the customers are just customers. They're not Bill Mosley or, or famous you know, star movie stars or whatever, you know, actors from horror. So I, you know, I'm thinking what, wait, what does he got to, I I remember thinking like, what does he got to do? What's he, what is he he talking about? Is he going to sign more autographs? And I just didn't put it together. 
and uh, I didn't recognize him. And then uh, my brother comes over. I think it was my brother or someone. He goes, dude, you know who that was? And I'm like, no, who was that? Because he says he has to, He's like, that was Bill Mosley, man. It's Chop Chop. <laughs> I was like, what? And then it hit me. I was like, oh, shit. I wish I would have known. I would have talked to him for a little bit instead of being, you know, in my own world. Yeah. So you never know who's at your table standing there. Um, all right. So now I've done that, although I didn't do the, the weathering. But you know what? We can go back. Funny enough, show you, even though I did this backwards. I can go back and add a little bit of the yellow, the first step to that back piece because I forgot. I just realized. Um, see, not paying attention. All right, so we're going to just add a little bit in because it doesn't matter that I've done the, the dark first. It's still going to come through just fine. So I'm just going to quickly throw down some yellow undertone. And this is example of what I was saying earlier, like earlier, like it doesn't matter always exactly what layer you're putting down first. You can sometimes just get away with trying it different ways and see what you like, see what results you like. It's a fun technique to play with for sure. All right, so now we've got that little back piece caught up to the jaw. So... I'm going to clean out this sponge a little here and then get rid of that, move that over there. So, all right, so as we were going to go into this orange, I'm going to do that now. Got some of this orange here. Or wait, did I grab the wrong one? What did I grab here? I think it's, oh, this one. Shoot. Okay, orange rust. Chris Dawson is saying that uh, apparently Bill sings in a band as Chop Chop, which I guess is Adrian Chop Chop. <laughs> the band that's, is called Corn Mugs. That's, apparently Buckethead is his part. Oh, rad. Dude, that sounds awesome, actually. <laughs> I'll have to go check those guys out sometime. That sounds like a lot of fun. It'd be awesome if he's just quoting, you know, like lines from that movie. You dead to my plate. All right. So, um, okay. So now the for me the the next step here is to define all the rusty stains where rust is catching or developing, and uh, you know that might be the cracks, the crevices, but also like running down the sides here. <clears throat> so I like to sort of run it straight straight down. Um and you know every once in a while you might need a little bit washier version of it. So I'm going to grab some of this Vallejo uh medium here we've talked about on the stream before. It's just a a thinning medium. Uh, mixing medium you can make washes very easily with it and it's the the i don't know was it lemian medium so that's good good uh gorilla snot juice for mixing paint <laughs> i'm always trying to make it a little more interesting um so we'll do we have like a darker rust here too going on so and I'm just looking to make a thin wash here so I can kind of come in to this deep crevice here and get some rusty stuff in there like that. Let's see here. And then you can just start playing around with, you know, like I was saying earlier, like where all this rust is going to start dripping down sides or whatever 
cracks or crevices or things you want to sort of add it to. Because, you know, these necromutants, man, they go out in the rain and they get all rusty and break down and... I don't know. I'm just coming out of these browns and just sort of playing with all this fun stuff here where it's dripping and again I'm just using the same brush as before nothing special not even the finest brush either in you know that you can get it's just a a cheapy 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 brush uh what not it's like a zero it's not super but it's not like the smallest zero I've ever had it's uh you know so you can get your hands on one that you like. Now, if I had uh, an airbrush out, which I do, well, I do have, I could bring it over. You can do stuff um, that's interesting where um, with an airbrush, uh, you, you know, you can kind of like, I could like take this corner here and just softly airbrush uh, some rust. I'll, here, I'll just do it with a brush just to illustrate it to you guys. But I could airbrush in just some orange solid kind of here. But I can just do it this way too. Where it's like, you know, a whole corner is gone real rusty or something. You know, you're suggesting uh, you'll get if you want the soft, soft look though, like where it fades. Um, you can you can do it better with an airbrush, but I'll just leave that like that because that'll work. And there's these little pits and things in the armor that I'm seeing, so I'm gonna try to accentuate those. Over here, there's some significant battle damage. Or something happened on this side. He got like clocked by some uh, giant mech robot defender, human defender or something. I don't know. I'm making shit up. But you know what I mean. Something happened like BAM. He got a right hook. One of those intergalactic peacemakers. Yeah, man. Ed 209 hooked him in the jaw. Because, you know, Robocop's in this world now too. It's actually by far my favorite robot. <laughs> yeah. I saw that movie when I was like four. Right. Yeah. I was Dude, some a buddy of mine over at this model um show thing on, on Saturday, mm -hmm. he had uh I forget the name of the character, but he had the guy that's like melting. He had a bust of him. It's so oh. rad. Mm -hmm. He's just melting. You know, his fingers just drip. But he had just the head. It would be cool if he did the arm, but he had the head. Wow. And he's just, the, the fake, it was awesome too because he really nailed it. It looked great. And my buddy, John Eubank, who's, who's, who suggested this tutorial tonight, he painted, he had a painted copy there. He did a fantastic uh, job painting it up. Man, it looked great. That was just one of the goons that got the melty. Yeah, thing, right? yeah, yeah, one of the bad dudes. I was going to say, I'm um, like, it's not no, he lasts so there again. No, I forget the the name. I forget the who the the character. I haven't seen Robocop in so long. I forget the character's name. To the, I suck with names, so <laughs> I couldn't remember your last name for half the first of the stream. Remember? It's okay. None of my I was Sam. Never, what was your last name again? <laughs> none of my teachers in middle school or high school remembered it either. <laughs> I had to keep asking you. I'm so bad that way. Gosh. Um. Anyway. So yeah, I'm just 
rusting this thing up, guys. You can see what's happening. Obviously, it's just three colors, four colors in right now. Let's not forget the bottom here. I'm not really going into the dark browns, but you can. You know, it, it, you, you can you can go into them as well if you want, uh, or around them, around it, or what you know, however you want to do it. Like I said, this is something to just have fun. It'll look great, you know. You don't need to uh, spend too much time worrying. And like I was saying, you can do this on a mask. I, I have a mask of this same design. I did a mask of him, and I do the mask the same way. Um, or if you have, like, some cosplay armor or something like that, you want to do uh, weathered like this, you can do it. You can use these techniques and do it. And you could just use cheap craft paints. You don't even need these paints. It's just about the colors need to be roughly, you know, in the right ballpark. You know, dark, dark black, brown. And if you can't find a dark brown, just mix a little black into your brown and you'll have dark brown like this. That's how I would just make up that color, you know, just grab a, a brown and, and then put black to it. Um, you know, get a rust tone, get yourself a you know, yellow ochre tone so you can mix a light rust. That that would give you the first layer that we did. And, um, you know, you, so you can easily make up these colors in a flash if you have to. You don't need to buy a special uh, kit to do it. So that's the great thing. Or a great thing about this technique. All right, so that's rusty enough under there. Okay, let's do the back piece here a little bit. We'll work in some rusty stuff here. Some folks in the chat are saying the name of the goon who is melting. His name is Emil. Is that was that his name? Yeah. God, it's been forever since I watched Robocop. Emil. Emil. I don't recall that, but that's that they they're I'm sure they're they're hundred percent right. Yeah, Emil, Emil. Yeah, something. Man, for watching been, that sequence as a kid, too long. Horrified seeing all of that stuff happen to him, and then <laughs> like I'm sitting there screaming my eyes off, and then he gets hit by the car and just turned into a pulp, and I'm like, oh, the monster's gone. Oh He's good. yeah, like, that's good right. He just spatters into like nothing. He just turns into human pulp. Yeah, Kurtwood Smith is the one who hits him with the car. That's it. Okay. Oh man. Yeah, that's great. That's a good movie. <laughs> Robocop, man. I was a big fan of that. Talk about like, yeah, like that's a you know, you, as a kid you see that and you're like, oh my god, he's a superhero. Man, that movie's so dark. <laughs> the first and second, yeah. Third uh, one is like that's a kid movie. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, yeah. It was made for me. Yeah, because that, that, man, it's like that first one is just such a dark story. It's not for kids, really, at all. <laughs> Pretty bad. Remember, too, the second one was horrifying. The stuff with the brain and them oh, taking yeah. it apart. Like, yep. Ugh. He was all jacked up. Fun stuff. Yeah. All right. Rusty rust. All right. So now we have that. There we go. Looking pretty cool. Um, so now you can take, I could take some of this darker orange by itself. And I can add, um, this is a wash. So I can go in and darken areas of this rust JJ in the chat 
in the RoboCop story. Apparently, he yes. met Peter Weller nice. as a kid uh, when his town gave the key to the city to RoboCop in costume. <laughs> and Peter Weller was at a Dairy Queen just waiting, and I guess they saw him over there. Wow. Crazy, man. Awesome. Can you imagine? Yeah. Wow, that's crazy. It's it's weird when they you run a, into people. They had a statue of RoboCop in Detroit, right? Did they? I don't know. Maybe. Sorry, you were gonna say. Sounds. I, I no. I, oh, I was just gonna say it's it is it's weird when you run into movie stars, man. Like out, like and you're not expecting it. Yeah, in the wild, yeah. In nature, I ran into Mel Gibson at uh, at Albertsons once. It was so strange. Like, oh my god, that's Mad Max. Mm -hmm. What are you doing here, Mr. Gibson? Well, he was, it was I'm funny. Hurt. No, yeah, it was, it was, it was even funnier than that. He was like bent over, and that's how recognizable he was. He was like bent over, sorting through pots and pans in an Albertsons. I can only, it was in board shorts and like an open t shirt, like a, a, I don't know, like a buttoned up. Hawaiian shirt, you know, some, uh -huh. like he was clearly barbecuing or something or, or about to. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. As casual as you can get. And, uh, you know, and last thing, you know, he wants to be bothered by somebody, <laughs> but, um, yeah, he, he was looking for some kind of pan or something to cook with and, you know, and, uh, yeah, it was funny, man. I was just, I, I looked down the aisle as I was walking by and it was like, Holy shit, that's Mel Gibson. <laughs> like, pretty crazy. I think the one celebrity run in I've ever had in my life was Adam West and the fellow who played the original Robin. Um, his name is Adam. Don't tell me together. Yeah. Together? Yeah. Whoa. They were in uh, the There's... LAX Hilton, I want to say. Oh, I wonder if they were there for a show or they something. They were, yeah. It okay. was a trade show. Um, yeah, there was a Doctor Who convention, and they just oh. happened to be there. And I was like, stun like, because I was sitting in the elevator, and the elevator door opens, and they're both just sitting there, and I'm like stunned, and I'm like, <laughs> you're out of breath, and he's like, I certainly am, and he just walks right past me, and I'm like, getting out the elevator, I'm like, what is happening? <laughs> he's like, you're right, pow. No, <laughs> no, I was gonna say like, it's funny if you're like, you guys are still hanging out, no. <laughs> <laughs> it may have been the original Robin. I can't remember. It was definitely a a little more of a shorter guy with um short dark hair. Well, who replaced him? Bruce something or oh, or shit. no uh no uh shit. What was the name? Was there because there was two right mm. from the original so. TV show? Yeah, and the Joker man. He used to be on uh. Was he on Hollywood Squares or something like that? I think so. Remember it was, that? It was the dude with the mustache. Like, he never yeah. shaved. Yeah. He was on Hollywood Squares. I, I think I remember seeing him on that show. So funny. Like, I can't see it. How can I remember that name, but not, like, someone's name? I can remember a TV show name. Yeah, sound off in the chat if you guys know the names of the people that we're forgetting right now. Yeah, yeah which is like... <laughs> mostly me. I'm mostly forgetting the names. Yeah. Jesus. This is getting pretty rusty looking. A little of this dark rust. This is a very, this, this color here is very washy. A very washy tone. So it's not, you know, not opaque at all. But it's just got a little more punch to it. So when you go in and just leave it in places, almost just, you almost want to just, when you put it down, you just want to let the brush do the work and just let it sit and soak wherever you kind of touch down that's what i'm doing i'm not like forcing a shape so much as just like trying to find areas that it'll just sit there and darken a little stronger on the rust Why am I thinking Ward? Something Ward. Is it Burt Ward? Burt Ward? Yeah, was that it? Mm. Burt or Bob? Mm. 
Well, Bob Kane is the, the sub- fellow who wrote that. creator of yeah. Batman. Yeah, Bob Kane. I'm getting called out by Mad Makes. I gotta project more so they can all hear the conversations that we're having. In. Oh, yeah. Well, that's because the microphone's turned away from you. Yeah. So, yeah, we gotta. You know what we gotta do? We just gotta get a second mic. Yeah. On this I can show. Just attach it to this right now. That's yep. no That's what we gotta do. I think we're at that point. All right. So I'm gonna be happy with that. I think. I think. I think. A little more dark orange in here. All right. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, boy. Rusty man. So if you think back to where we started, where it was just this patina crazy green thing, you're probably going like, oh, yeah, that's cool. See it, see it, see it coming to life. Or you're like, I don't know what he's doing. Anyway, um, so what else we got here? Oh, another thing we can do. Let me grab some white. Oh, cool. Thank you. Oh, you know what? Let's do that then. Actually, you know what we'll do? This is a good, a real good, because we're pretty far along quickly. This is a good stopping point. And we'll do artist share. Because we're almost at 7 o'clock. And then I'll come back to the next couple steps. I want to grab a white color real quick, too. I want to show you guys a few extra little goodie steps that you can do to really enhance all this. And I'm going to throw this crazy drenched towel, paper towel away. All right, so... All right, so let's roll on into our artist share for the evening. I'm going to clear my plate, so to speak, here. Make some room. It's a good one. It's a good one. It's a good one. I'm going to move this guy. I'm going to move our necro mutant out of the way. I'm gonna, you're going to instantly recognize this artist share, I'm sure. I've got these two wonderful busts from him. One I shared last week. But more than that, I've got a book. Ooh, I've even got a mask. Yeah. All right, this will be enough. So tonight, uh, the artist share for tonight is Steve Wang. Ah... Everyone knows Steve Wang. Come on, gotta know who Steve Wang is. But if case you don't know, I will tell you a little bit about what I know. Um, I've known Steve for a long time now. Um, he is actually the guy that got me into special effects makeup and uh, helped me break my, break in to my career there in that world. So I always uh, say thank you so much, Steve, for that. Um, I met Steve kind of over the internet. I was I think I was sending him pictures of my masks or something way back when. And, uh, uh, you know, he was uh, replying back through email. You know, he, he really liked them and, and cool. And, and we were both heading in a few weeks to a convention show called Transworld in Chicago, which at the time Transworld in Chicago was the big mecca show for halloween masks and props and everybody in that industry they would go to that show and buy for the next season you know mom and pop shops big shops um party city all this stuff you know they go to the show and buy all their stuff from vendors well i did the show with just some masks collectible masks because i knew there were some uh, mask collectors that went there as well and uh, Steve was there with his mask line, Biomorphs. He did this line uh, back a number of years ago called Biomorphs, and it was all these cool masks. Anyway, um, but as you know or don't know, Steve has had a very, very long uh, career in special makeup effects, 
Um, he's a master sculptor, master painter, um, master suit builder, um, helped to define the way uh, suits are made and created for special effects movies. So uh, he's got quite the career, actually. Um, he started, I believe, somewhere in 18 or 19 years old in special makeup when he was working for Stan Winston Studios when he had done Predator with Matt Rose uh, by his side and um, Monster Squad, Gilman, things like that. You know, some pretty famous things. Um, so anyway, the artist share tonight is Steve Wang. And um, I got started, he gave me my break in, uh, I think it was 2004, he got me my first gig, or helped me get my first gig at Patrick Tatabla's Studios on a movie called The Cave. Um, and uh, it was my first time working on a special effects film, it was a lot of fun, great time, great memories. And from there forward, Steve was help, uh, hiring me or getting me into shop after shop that he was going to, and we were working together all the time. So it was awesome. I had a lot of fun with Steve. But I knew of Steve's work long before that, obviously. I was a big fan, influenced heavily by Steve way, way back when, uh, you know, years before I actually met Steve. So um, I was seeing his work in all over the place. In fact, one of the first places I actually became aware of Steve's work was actually Amazing Figure Model Magazine because Steve had done some model kits. Uh, he did the Gilman and he had done some stuff for, I think, Horizon and a bunch of these model kit uh, companies. And I'd seen um, a magazine interview of him in there, which showed some of his amazing work, uh, which I'm going to show you some of that in this book. Uh, because I've got these two model kits, which I just got this one at Monster Palooza from Steve, and I got this one from him uh, when I worked for him at his shop. Oh, geez, way back when. Uh, I don't even remember now. <laughs> it's a while back. So um, I've worked with Steve on many different things. I've worked with him on films. Uh, he's uh, brought me into his shop to paint stuff for Elite Creature Collectibles way back in the day when he was starting that up, and I've worked on Blizzard giant blizzard statues with steve so a lot of stuff so i've been around uh around steve for a long time and uh remain friends with him today and just saw him at monster palooza he had an amazing booth with amazing work always always setting the bar very very high so um and that's just the way it is steve is just a super gifted amazing talent he's influenced so many so let's talk a little bit about some of his work, or let's share some more of his work here. Um, if we go into this book, this is a book that came out a while back called Designing Movie Creatures and Characters Behind the Scenes. And this has many, many amazing artists. If you don't have this book, you definitely should get it because there are some seriously amazing artists in here. But if we go to the Steve Wang section here, uh, you will immediately recognize and see, of course, Predator. And there's... A picture now steve sculpted the suit of the predator and here he is painting the suit and matt rose had sculpted the head and i'm not sure if steve painted i think steve painted the head but matt sculpted the head same with monster squad um and then here's a shot of steve um uh, working at uh on the marcus vampire for underworld and then i think this is was original suit design for like a demo in Japan or something like that, if I remember correctly. Godzilla, of course, he's the man behind Abe Sapien and creating Abe Sapien for Hellboy over at Spectrum Motion. This was a thing he did based on a concept, I believe Constantine did or something, but Steve sculpted it. This was just uh, from the Blade series, but just based on a concept. This was a Beautifully sculpted demon head from a, for ADI. Uh, that's a shop that I worked with Steve quite a bit. This was a monster design Steve did in digital for the cave. And so on and so forth. You know, Guyver. You can go all the way back to, he's the man behind uh, the suits for Guyver. Get the fuck out of, Was he really? Yep. Holy shit, yep. I didn't there know he is. that. Yep. Along with uh, Eddie Yang and, and uh, right. Jordy worked on it and many others. Of course, there were many artists on that, by the way. Not just, but Steve... Steve was the man, uh, one of the main dudes behind uh, Guyver. Guyver's my shit. That's awesome. <laughs> yep. So that's the dude. Um, 
uh, Blade Three, you know, demon design stuff, and and Patrick Topless is next. So there, there's a little just rundown of some things. I mean, and and this is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to films because Steve's career has been so long that you know he's been involved with some of the things. And some of the latest stuff he did was the Bill and Ted uh, robot in the new Bill and Ted, and he had, he had done. Um, He's done a number of monuments and things that are that are around. Uh, so yeah, he's he's had quite the career. Um, and then and then you know Steve's also a big fan of latex masks, and he has sculpted many latex masks for Don Post Studios, Death Studios, um, you know, and even Biomorphs, his own his own mask company. So, you know, his career is extremely extensive. So uh, you could talk about it for days, but. Um, yeah, so tonight is a little tribute to my buddy Steve Wang and his amazing work. Um, he just did some new aliens, some reptilian aliens, a bust and a figure that are coming out from Elite Creature Collectibles, his own collectible company, where they have a ton of cool collectibles that you can buy. You should check out that as well. Um, if you get a chance, go to his site. Uh, it's ECC Collectibles. And check out what they've got because they have a ton of great pieces that you can buy or pre-order and um yeah that's pretty much it i mean there's a whole bunch more i'm sure i'm forgetting about um we always share a lot of goofy stories together and, and fun times um and steve's always one that shares a lot of crazy stories from the 80s films he's worked on in the 90s you know um super humble guy super sharing guy very good guy and um you, you know, he all, by the way, he also sells his own uh, mini bus or not mini bus, but these smaller bus art pieces you can usually buy from him direct and stuff as well. And I believe um, these some of these guys go to a charity, which is awesome. So uh, that's great, too. And um, yeah, check out Steve Wang's work. Look up his stuff. If you're not familiar with it, if you are, then you know what I'm talking about. Um, you cannot help but be highly influenced by his work. It's that strong and that amazing. The creative genius behind his stuff is it's just insane. So, um and we've talked a little bit just to give you guys a little something to look forward to. I'm hoping to get Steve on the show uh soon. We've talked about it. Um he said he would love to do it. So, you know, not to put him on the spot, but hopefully we'll we'll get him on the show. So I'll make it happen, don't worry. <laughs> Calling him right now. Steve. Yeah. <laughs> um but anyway, here's to you, Steve. Thank you so much for all the inspiration over the years, man. You rule. I uh, appreciate uh everything you've shared with me to help me in my career. And I'm sure everyone does as well that you've helped because I know you've helped many. All right. So there we go. All right, so now let's move into question time let's do our this is the time of the night where we do take questions from you guys so anything you want to ask regarding tonight's text techniques or whatever you want to talk about now's the time so let's do it sure. and sam you'll run us through as yeah, usual i actually uh there's one thing that uh neo kazama in the chat actually pointed out neo um, or neo 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 yeah. Sorry, Neo. Like the Matrix is Neo. They oh. point out, um, what is it? Today is that, it was either today or yesterday is the uh, 35th year anniversary of Predator. Like oh, Predator yeah. Released. It yeah. was. You're right. You, you're, you know what? You're absolutely right. And I'd like to, to tell people uh, at Monster Palooza, they did do, and I, and, I, and I hated that I missed this, had to miss this. I just couldn't make it on Saturday night, but uh, they did a, a tribute to Matt Rose, who sculpted the head um for predator matt is has passed away a few years ago extremely sad at such a young age we miss we all miss matt tremendously i know steve misses him probably more than anyone it was his best buddy for many many years and um yeah he was a great guy too and i, I i'm just fortunate i got to work with matt many times and uh, he was such a fun guy to work with an amazing talent uh as well but yes, it was the anniversary anniversary of Predator, which was super cool. Um, so, you know, just one of those designs that 
inspired generations later of movies and and effects artists and what can you say you know it's aliens predator those are once in a lifetime designs man all right so let's go into question time all right so our first question actually comes from sweet tooth in the chat all right sweet tooth thanks for the question uh and sweet tooth is actually curious to know uh who sculpted the sculpted the conan slash eight pet that's right behind you right now that guy oh this yep oh uh la, 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 la. oh god don't make me blank brain 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 work what's his name oh god I'm gonna, now i'm gonna get i'm gonna get so destroyed by artist friends that i know <laughs> um let me hit you back on that question. Let's look it up on Sideshow site because, oh, my God, I don't want to ruin this. I, I, can, I have his face in my head, and I can't think of it. Oh, my God. He's a really good sculptor. Um, hang on. Let me look it up. I'm sorry because this is uh, – I, I don't want to – I'm already blowing it. Um, You're okay. You're okay. Hold on. I'm going to find it. 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 So sorry to the artist right now. Jesus Christ. <laughs> and it's good when I see it, it's good. When I, I know, like, as soon as I see it, I'm like, Ugh! um, come on. Where is the I'm trying to get to the credits here? Um, if you guys ever want to find credits uh, sideshow lists the credits yes they always uh, do. troy mcdevitt troy mcdevitt oh my gosh troy is the sculptor of this beautiful conan piece i'm sorry troy i apologize buddy i know I, your face was in my head and i just couldn't i like i said earlier i am so bad with names so i'm about apologize troy mcdevitt yes that is who sculpted that check his work out on facebook troy's a cool guy um punishment will be he gets one free shot with a hammer from 20 feet away <laughs> no 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 the, yeah you can't get those no more they're or well you can buy them on ebay they're expensive but yeah great piece man i mean talk about capturing something right out of the comic book that's it right there yep. you know i mean yep. and you can change the 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 axe to a sword and yada 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 i love that thing and i love apes so when you love apes and you love conan pff, what better piece to have yeah one day I would like to repaint that thing, you know, really go at it. All right. So thank you for the question, Troy. I apologize, buddy. I, I, I hate that I couldn't remember your name. All right. That moving on. That question came from Sweet Tooth. Sweet Tooth. And then our next question comes from JJ. All right. Who, it's funny you were mentioning uh, cheap brushes earlier or uh, quality brushes. His question is actually... Um, are there any cheap brushes that you think are better than expensive ones, like Walmart brushes versus like something you'd get from a really high-end store? And also, what would you say, in your opinion, is a good all-around set to have for most situations? Yes. Yeah, so the first part of that question, cheap brushes. There are brushes you should avoid buying um, because they are so cheap and made so cheaply, like kid pack sets or some of these pre-packed sets of brushes um i know it's great to save money on brushes because they are expensive and they adds up and you know they're either easily die out on you but i will say that you don't really want to go with some of those and i forget what they're called exactly but they are these cheap brown haired bristle brushes and you'll know what i'm talking about because all the brown hairs come right out of the brush all on your work and stuff so those you want to avoid the best place to buy cheap brushes that are good and you're going to have to search through a ton of brushes because when you go to this website and search for brushes it's like there's just a ton man but you can go in there and find good ones um a lot of good ones are these watercolor brushes that are clear handles with orange bristles those are good cheapies there's a whole bunch. There's this blue brand. This is great. This brand I love. I mean, you can get all kinds of shapes and sizes. Just look for Princeton Select. The Princeton Select line, the brush quality is super good. Cheap. Couldn't ask for cheaper. And it comes in all varieties of sizes and, and everything, which is what he's asking. And where I buy these is DickBlick.com. So go to DickBlick, 
dot com and find Princeton Select with these blue handles. And you, I mean, just to illustrate to you guys the different, like here's two different sizes in that square shape. And then they've got rounds and they've got everything down to super fine and, and, and even very large. So the Princeton Select is a great brush. It's cheap, affordable. And then, like I said, these watercolor type ones where it's a clear handle, these are, these are good too. And they're not expensive, you know. And you can even buy even cheaper ones on that site. You can search through them and find them. But the ones to avoid have these dark brown bristle uh type brushes that are super cheap that brisk the hairs just come out all the time i hate those so stay away from those all right cool thanks for the question yeah, thank you very much jj we actually got a few more questions in the chat just now awesome we've got our next one comes from matt mcneil matt what's up uh matt is asking did you select this turquoise base color because of the blue slash green eye it's a perfect contrast to the rust and skin tone, but also not the most expected choice in the best way. Hmm. Um, I didn't select it based on the eyes. I actually selected that color just because I've done it many, many, this technique or this specific technique I'm showing you guys where it's an extreme patina. I have done this technique on many, many things. If you look back through some of my masks, like I've done one with a helmet where the whole helmet is this color and it's all done this way. And there's th this guy in a mask and, and of course this bust and many other things. In fact, I've even got another model kit back here where it's base coated. Some of the armors base coated, ready to go. And, um, um, so the thing is, you can use this technique on all sorts of things. I've also used this technique on sideshow collectible pieces I've painted for sideshow. We've used it before. So, um, would one of them be like Batman's last? Is that one you're no, that was a cave underlit cave thing. You're talking. You're talking about the base. Yeah. Yeah. No, that was more of an underlit cave thing like you know when you go into a cave and you get that blue turquoise lighting we right. tried we tried to achieve that look on that um uh well we we did we didn't try we didn't try we did but it looked good but the the thing was um this technique was just something you'll find um a lot more on model tanks and planes and war and things like that or so but i i so the color choice though is just something i like to do it's not something um that i really got from anywhere specific i just like to do it I, I like the look of it i think it looks great it's like you and 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 i'm not done when you when i get to the end you're going to start to understand how it looks like metal and what makes it look like metal because right now it doesn't look like metal it just looks patina and rust and that's all we've got so far so um but yeah this is a fun one Sorry, I, I'm drinking and then, you know, what, what you, uh, yeah, <laughs> life is happening. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, but no, um, uh, funny enough, it, it is sort of matching those eyes. I'm probably going to change these eyes, though, to be honest with you. I'm not, I'm not going to keep these eyes. I think, uh, I, I think I'm going to try something different because I've done these eyes before and, you know, I'm, and I'm still not done with the skin. I got to totally change the skin and put the, and do his armor and this thing so far from being done. But anyway, we're just focusing on this jaw. Yeah. And I hope I answered this question. That's I would say so. yeah, but no, it does match the eyes a little. It's, it's not quite the same. It's the eyes are like a lime green thing and that's more of a patina, but you know, it works, but I'm thinking the eyes, I'm going to go like probably just pure white dead and just veiny and creeped out stark, you know, white kind of milky eyes. All right. Next question. Our next question comes from Ramon or Raymond Linares. Oh, Raymond, thanks for the question. Uh, and they ask, is it true that you helped paint a few of the production ECC Reaper maquettes? I know you painted the prototype, but I heard you helped paint a few of the production pieces as well. Well, that is not true. No, that is not true. I only painted... Uh, two and one was the prototype that still resides in steve wang's shop 
uh, his his effects studio. He has it on display there. And the other one went off overseas to the production warehouse facility where they copy the paint job. Um, but no, there was no, no, there was no instance where I painted production pieces and touched them up or anything like that. I think that's what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah no, didn't happen. Sorry. After I painted two, I was done with that thing. Trust me. <laughs> what, is, what is the ECC Missouri? I'm not. Okay, so I'm ECC not is a statue company uh, um, uh, called Elite Creature Collectibles that Steve Wang started. Um, and they do, they do like what we do at right. Sideshow. They do statue and collectibles. And, um, and they produce, you know, all kinds of different things. Some some stuff is like stuff that Steve's worked on in movies in the past. Some stuff is Marvel. Some is uh, horror. You know, all all types. And so the Reaper is that piece that that mask I showed. It's it's this mask that Steve did, but it's the maquette, the full figure of it, the concept. It's a concept vampire that was never used. There was this concept vampire oh. that was never used in Blade Two, right. but but there was a drawing sort of similar to this. I mean, Steve, you know, did his thing on it, but I believe Constantine uh, might have done the original sketch or something. But there, we did a full figure of him in leather pants, uh, which is still on my website. Uh, there's pictures. I have it posted on my Casey Love Paintworks hmm. Instagram page. You can see it there. Or you can go to ECC Collectibles and see it. So yeah, that's what it was. It's a is a concept maquette. Yeah. Cool. Our next question comes from Hammond Skull. Hammond, thanks for the question. And they ask, do you find translucent resin reacts to the heat over there? I guess in California. On hotter days here in mine. Hmm. Oh, on, on hotter days here, mine bubbles up and starts to steam. Just wondering if that's normal out there in Cali, seeing as how it gets so damn hot. Yeah, well, that translucent resin, especially smooth on three twenty five, three smooth cast three twenty five. I don't know if you're talking about that one, but I yeah, I've seen it steam. I mean, all resins will steam and get super hot, but that one, yeah, it definitely does. Um, that is normal. It in and it gets really hot um, in the mold. I always recommend to people with that one. Um, uh, well, the truth is, you know, I've talked with some of the resin uh, people, you know, that make the resins. And the truth is, because those clear resins are more of a pure, uh, they don't have uh, things to turn them white and whatnot. They're actually supposed to be less aggressive on your mold. Um, of course, we tint them. So, you know, I don't know about all that. But I have noticed that they, they do, those molds last a while. Um that resin does steam. I've seen it. Uh, bubbling. Um, I don't know what you're referring to. Make sure there's no moisture in your mold. If you live in a moist area, you are going to have to uh, uh, dry your mold out first. Uh, because if it's frothing, like at the top where you've poured, if it's frothing and bubbling, if that's what you're talking about, that's bad. That means moisture has gotten into the resin. And it can get into the bottles, the cans, if you leave them open. So make sure you're always closing those up after you use it every time. Make sure there's no moisture in that mold whatsoever before you use it. You can baby powder the mold, uh, dry it out with a hair dryer, and then baby powder it. Now, if you're talking that you feel like it's getting too hot and doing weird bubbling or something, what you can do is put one side, like B or A, I think A would be better, you can put it in the fridge for a little bit. Make sure it's closed up tight. You can cool it down in the fridge just for a few minutes. And then when you go to pour, it'll give you just a little bit more working time to, to pour it. Um, but yeah, it's a quick set thing usually. So yeah, but I do use some of that here and I, I do the translucent resin. I've been doing that for many, many, many years now. Um, and it's fun to do different translucent looks and stuff. So because then you can work the paint job off of off of that. Yeah. Yeah, Hammond Sculpt says that they're using smooth cast 325. Yep. Yeah, and it kicks fast, man. You got to work fast. So if you want to put the A side into a refrigerator for a little bit, it'll help give you just a teeny bit more working time to get it in the mold and do whatever. Now, I, I rotocast that stuff too, and I can tell you this. 
a lot of people have a frustrating time or they say that it's not rotocastable, but it is. The trick with it is you must do small batches, small batches to rotocast it. You can do it. I've done it many, many, many times on big heads and things. You just have to do very small batches every time. Let it kick first. Let the, the one kick and, and cure up and then do your next batch small again and then your next batch and build it up slowly and you can rotocast it so it doesn't just all clump. Because if you do too much at once, it'll just clump into a big ball and then you're, you don't have a, a good casting. Our next question comes from Mad Makes. All right, Mad Makes. Um, thanks for the question, man. And they ask, I'm just getting into molding and casting my sculptures, mostly figures 8 to 12 inches made in monster clay. Mm -hmm. What are your suggested mold and casting products to be able to reuse at least a dozen times? I oh, guess, yeah, times. easy. You want, you want 12 castings, right? Well, first... Uh, you can there's a number of silicones you can use out there i would recommend just using a tin based silicone just you know that's the cheapest easiest uh most reliable silicone you can get i use uh from reynolds if you want smooth on i use uh, mold max 30. it's a pink silicone it's got a nice flexibility yet it's holds its shape very well um so if you need to do a solid mold and cut it um or better two-piece mold, you know, make a two-piece mold. It, it, it's less wear and tear on your mold. Um, there's 1065, 1060, yeah, 1065 blue and green silicones. Those are great as well. Um, I think those are Walco silicones, I believe. Um, but yeah, something like that, you know. And then um, for resin, uh, one of a, a great resin is um, if you're looking for something to, to, to kick quickly and get in and out of a mold quickly, like 10, 15 minutes, you know, be able to every 15 minutes do a new casting, then uh, you could use Smooth Cast 320, which is a very reliable resin, and you can mix it one to one by volume. So it's easy to use. You mix it, you pour it. Um, baby powder your molds. So you don't get air bubbles everywhere. Baby powder and then blow it out with a, a, a air hose. And try to use baby powders that don't have talc. There's talc-free ones, which are healthier for you. You don't want to breathe that talc stuff into your lungs. Do not. Do no. <laughs> you can get cornstarch as well works. Mm. Um, um, so there's those. Uh, there's another resin I use. I'm forgetting the name, but there's many on the market that you can use. Um, you just want one that's, you know, if you want one with more working time, you can use 321, Smoothcast 321. It will require a longer cure time, but it gives you much longer working time, like five to seven minutes. And then your cure time is like 30, 40 minutes or something. Yeah. Okay. All right. Our next question comes from Sean Meyer. Sean, thanks for the question. Sean asks, hey, Casey, is the FX makeup industry oversaturated with talent? And is there room for new people to break in? Uh, I don't think it's oversaturated. Uh, there is room to break in. I know this because a friend of mine just broke in for the first time, and he's over at Spectral Motion, um, and he's new. And um, I think the thing is, is you know, it's not an easy industry to sometimes get into. Um, sometimes it's who you know, not what you know, but it is required that you have a very strong portfolio. I mean, that is key. If you don't have a strong portfolio and you're trying to be a sculptor, and let's say your work just isn't up to standards of other sculptors or, or whatnot, doesn't mean you can't get in and break in. You can. It just means that you might have to break in at a, a lower level shop or something and get or get your foot in the door by just doing some free shows or, or, or interning or whatever. There are ways to get your foot in the door. Um, it's just getting your foot in the door the first time and getting that start. Um, but there is heavy talent in the business for sure that you're up against. Um, doesn't mean you can't get in. There's always room. It's always growing. It's always moving. Um, don't ever, you know, get your dreams crushed because you just don't think you can break in. If it's what your what what your um, uh, uh, passion is, then move forward with it and go for it. Um, 
there's two sides too. There's digital side. I mean, you know, there's there's the traditional and the digital. I'm I'm assuming you're talking about traditional. Um, but yeah, have a strong portfolio uh, ready to go. So work really hard um, and get yourself some established work that's quality and looks good. You don't need a ton. You just need five, six good pieces to show somebody. Um, makeups, whatever your you know monsters, creatures, whatever it is. Um, realism you know of course and uh you can get you can you can break in i mean um you know you you just got to put the effort forward for sure and the drive and the passion and then if you have those things you can definitely break in um yeah i mean there is a lot of people working in the business for sure and there are the down times when shops don't need anybody because there's no films and then there's the times where it's so abundantly busy they need people left and right so you know that's another key is maybe break in at the time when shops are super busy and need people. Um, yeah, but yeah, it's possible. So don't, uh, don't ever think it's not. I would say like, yeah, stay focused, yes. stay determined, stay curious, stay humble. Oh yeah. 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 The last one for sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, our next question uh, comes from Neil Kazama. Oh, Neil, thanks for the question. Neil asks, uh, do you have any advice on painting a crocodile mask? Any specific color palettes and patterns to make it look a little more real? And have you worked with wildfire UV paints? Ah, yeah. Okay. Suggestions on how to dilute it to run through an airbrush? Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> okay, uh, you said it's Neo. Yeah, Neo. Kazama. Neo. All right. Uh, so, okay, let's start with uh, your crocodile, right? Um, the, I, I know this is not the, you're looking for some magic answer here or something, but I'm going to tell you the truth. The truth is study the real thing, study the real thing, a hundred percent study everything you can look at. Now, is it wet? Is it dry? Cause they look different. You know, when it's dry, they get all in the cracks, dusty when they're sitting out on the beach or, or the rocks bathing, sunbathing, uh, it's like a giant water lizard. Right. And then when it's not it's in the water everything's wet and goes dark so they look a little different so it depends on what you what you look and there's albino ones and there's green and different green tones but study them like as much as you can look at the nuances look at the color shifts the changes these are the things you want to try to apply to yours to convince people that it's realistic and i can't stress that enough i mean i know that sounds like a, a generic answer like oh just look at it um, but that is the best thing because studying nature will help you understand how things work, why they are the way they are. You know, why is a crocodile dark on the top, light on the bottom, right? Um, it does camouflage itself better that way. So, um, but yeah, even in between in the belly, look at what's going on there. You know, there's, there's sometimes subtle bits of real light blues and pinks and things in that skin. I mean, or yellows. So you really want to study the animal. Its eyes are crazy when you look at the eyes and study them up close. And you have all the reference you need on the internet. So go there, grab as many great photos as you can of them, and try to mimic the paint job and break it down. This layer first, that layer second, this one, that one, that one. Try not to just put down one green tone and then a bunch of spots and modeling. Uh, don't do that. I mean, look at the shifting of color in the mouth, how it goes from light to dark or, and are the greens different? Like, is it one green into another green? Is there some shifts in there? Is there some things in there you can do to add dimension to your uh, piece? Um, so that'd be that. Now, what was the other part of the question? Uh, the other part of the question. Oh, wildfire. Yeah. Wildfire, wildfire paints. Paint. Yes, I have used them. Actually, we use them on a blizzard piece I did for Steve Wang, uh, with Steve Wang for blizzard. It was a giant guy with horns, uh, Illidan and his whole tattoos were carved in his body. And we had to go in with a brush with a black light and paint them in very carefully so that they could be, uh, so that it would glow. Um, airbrushing is tricky on those because the paint is not designed to be airbrushed. It's very, and, and I believe when you thin it that much, it loses, it loses its power to glow the way it should. I think it's more of just a brushable paint. Now, that being said, you might 
you might try um the only thing i can think of that you could try and i'm not saying this will work but citadel miniature paints the company that makes these miniatures right here this company citadel they make the little paints they make something like this but it's totally clear liquid and it's called air cast thinner it's not this one this one's a milky liquid there's another one that's super clear liquid called air cast thinner look for some of that and see if that'll work if that doesn't work i don't think it's it that you can thin it i think you have to brush it on it's just such a pasty thick paint that um it's just not designed for airbrushing now here's the thing though if you just need glow in the dark there are other glow in the dark paints out there by other companies that you can buy yeah they're not as crazy as wildfire but you can just buy glow in the dark paints and airbrush them on i've done that so there are others that you can get by other brands golden might make it actually okay and our next question comes from neil leffler neil thanks for the question neil asks what is the best way to fill bubbles in resin in thin parts, like thinner parts? Fill bubbles? Yeah. Um, in thinner parts. Um, well, I mean, you know, when you have a bubble, really the best thing to do is cut it open with an X-Acto um, and, and mix up some epoxy putty and shove it in there and fill it up. So it's nice and smooth and sand anything down that needs to be sanded. I mean, because that's going to cure without air. You know, it's going to, if it's inside, it's going to cure no matter what. It's a chemical cure and it's going to become hard as a rock. So really, uh, that's the best way. I mean, you could use carbondo, which is another chemical reaction thing. It's a little more messy, but it's, it's easy to sand down. You could do carbondo. You could do carbondo shrinks a little bit, though. Um, but really, the best is like a two-part uh, epoxy, uh, sorry, uh, uh, yeah, epoxy um, putty, putty. So like you can use the, the quick setting ones from hardware stores, or you can go with something with more working time, like AVs is a great one, AVs epoxy putty, or you can use Magic Sculpt epoxy putty. Those are the best, especially on resin. Now, if it's latex, you want to use rubber. You know, if it's a latex piece that has a bubble on something thin, then you just want to use latex. That's the best thing. You just fill, fill it that. You got to make sure it can dry, you know, if it's down deep or something somewhere. You might have to hair dry it and do it in layers. All right, and that's about all the questions that we have for tonight. Woo! That was a good one. All right. Thanks for all the questions, guys. We appreciate it. Um, it's always fun to answer those. I try to give you my best advice or guess if I know it. But uh, there you have it. So we're going to tribute to Turkey Merck's mug again. Such a cool mug. Zombies. Zombie mug. All right. So woo, let's get back to this before we run out of time, guys. Because we are running out of time. So let's go back to this jaw. What else can we do? I don't know. Oh. I know what I want to do. All right, so I think I grabbed, didn't I grab? Well, what? Yeah, I did grab. So I, I grabbed white, and I've got the base color that I told you guys I based this out. So one of the things I'm going to do is add a little extra flavor to this, and I'm going to take some white paint on my mixing palette here. if you're you're catching this yeah i guess okay go cool 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 um where's my trusty brush i'm gonna take the base color and mix a lighter version of it and this will be more of like a enhanced highlighting type of technique mm-hmm mm-hmm Why am I doing this? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Um, so what I'm going to do 
is just to give a little something extra here um is some of these dark brown areas that i put in um kind of going to go around the very outer edge let's see if this even shows up I'm thinking i'm going to go around the outer edge of some of these and just kind of give like a, a you know how like when paint chips it can get a little bit of lighter um broken edge sort of look i guess that's what i'm suggesting here i may have to like lighten this up even more to get it to to read correctly i'll add more white paint to it and i mean i'm not going to do this everywhere but just a few little spots here and there just to suggest like where the paint has peeled up and then it's Like gonna peel further or something like that of course you mean all you know all the paint is like painted to death at this point like who knows like maybe these guys had these army green jaw or something or who knows what color was originally but that's another thing you can do you know you don't have to do it do it how i did it where it's all patina you could have um paint still showing through you know from the what whatever the original color uh might have been so that's kind of a cool thing too you can indicate uh, some of the paint and chip the paint you can have a lot of fun with this so once again i, I think uh my buddy john eubank who's a really amazing painter too by the way um he he suggested this demo tonight so thank you john again appreciate that because i was like yeah you know what? That'd be a great demo. It's hard, you know, the demos are tricky because some of these demos, you know, some of the stuff I'm choosing to do, I can't finish in two hours. There's just no way, you know. So it's nice to have ones like this in between where, you know, the whole thing can really be, it's more of a, just a, a sectional look at something that, that I do and, and I can share with you guys and then it's like okay I can get through that in two hours no problem I think a maquette one would be cool though just for you guys to see in a series you know like uh, maybe I'll do the alien gray alien thing or something that'd be a fun one and there's all this Necro, necro gunk under here. Patina. So this is just a lighter version of the base color, and like I said, I just hit that. Like I'm, I'm hitting next to the dark, the dark brown. I'm hitting just the edges. Right next to it. And it kind of gives it like a paint peeling vibe or something like that. Since it's light next to dark, it enhances the makes the, the dark look even deeper, like like it's lower than the rest.
but you know whatever you can do to give dimension more dimension to something is good and it's a subtle technique it's not you know you don't even have to do this technique honestly i mean it's just something extra i'm throwing in real quick to show you guys um i've done it without this but this does look nice it's a little added a uh, little added bling to it all. Because, I mean, when you study patina, you'll see that patina is also not just one color. I mean, there's there's light areas and dark air, darker areas of patina. So it's this helps sell it. Again, it was like I was saying earlier uh, about the, the the crocodile paint job. You know, you study same with buildings and weathering and 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 these kinds of things. You have to study it, you know, study it really well, and then look at what's going on in nature because that is the best teacher. Is nature you can't beat it, and it's right at your fingertips. You can just look it up. It's such a simple thing, and it. You know, because a lot of people just want answers to it. But the answer is studying and practice. That's how you get good at something. So if you're willing to put the work in, that's how you're going to get good at it. <clears throat> and, you know, you look at some of these miniature painters, man, and, they, and they're masters of weathering. So, you know, you can learn from others as well. The fun I'm having painting this, I'm just like imagining this guy just these things just marching with all these rotted jaws at, you know, some soldiers or something. <laughs> It'd make a rad movie, right? Or a short, short film. All right, that's it. Let's do a GoFundMe. Everybody send me seventy five thousand dollars. Let's do a GoFundMe right now. Necromutants. <laughs> That actually scares me when I see other artists doing that. Like, oh my god! They, like, dude, they gotta come through, man. You don't come through, you're done. That guy ripped me off. Took all my money. Never made a movie. <laughs> There's a lot of people that I graduated college with who uh, went into Kickstarter campaigns for their short films, maybe. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. Some of them got funded, and I remember seeing like their Facebook posts after it got funded. They're like, "I'm really excited, but oh my god, what have I signed myself up?" Yep. Then the reality kicks yep. in, man. You got to deliver. If you don't, you're done. You're done. I mean, it would be fun to do, but holy moly. What a, yeah. All right. So, you know, without getting too, too carried away with this little trick here, you know, I just want to add a little something, something there. And you can now see some difference going on here, which is nice. It's got an interesting, a, a more interesting look than just the one patina green tone. You could maybe, you know, might even just do some, some other stains come like with it coming down, like light, lighter stain. Why not? You know, who knows? Uh, nature does weird things that you sometimes don't think about. I'll put a touch in here too. Okay. Stop noodling. All right. So uh, what else do we have for these lovely folks? So, I mean, I don't know. I, I didn't study the the little guide you know, on what they do with it. You know, there's all these different colors here. I mean, what else do I have here? Light rust. I mean, geez, how many rusts you need, man? Rust is rust, right? No. <laughs> I suppose some of these are thicker. Yeah, this one's a thicker rust. So that's kind of cool. We'll see what it does. I don't know. I'll just mess with it here for a sec. You never know till you try. It's um, this little kit that I bought. It's got some different rusts in it. It's a thicker, uh, a little different. This is more like a, yeah, maybe when you see some of those flaky, thick, rusty patches. Kind of reminds me of that. 
try some out here. Yeah, so this one here is like if you want to really get some of that dark stuff going on. This is this is it. The magic sauce. This is more your rusty chips and creases and crevices. Now I gotta paint the rest of this guy, man. Finish him up. Looking cool. Could also do some rust spots with this. Just rusty little spots and things. And everything he eats tastes like rust. I mean, gross. Rotten. Thanks. <laughs> I didn't even see him standing there. <laughs> like, uh, um. So yeah, you know that's what this dark, dark one's for. But all right. So now here's the trick. Here's the final trick I usually do um, with these pieces. Um, so once I get to a point where I'm happy, and you know, I'm just gonna say, okay, I'm happy with this as is. Uh, now the magic comes in and the magic is this chrome pen because this is what's going to make everything feel like metal because we're going to indicate that metal pieces and little places are popping back through where it's worn you know like so it got rusty and then because he's biting stuff or whatever then this little bit of metal and you know tone is coming back through let me get a fresh one of these paper towels you have to sometimes push these pens to get the ink or the paint to come out be careful though because once it starts coming out it really comes out so yeah i think what i do is i just Gently go around. Well, it's still not working the way it should, though. Hold on. Come on. Also, might need to shake this up. All right. Oh, yeah. Okay, so then, as I was saying, what I do is I kind of go around and pick out points of interest, you know, where, uh, you know, the, the you would see metal coming back through, like, on, mostly, like, sharp edges and, and, and things like that. And you can sometimes just run this thing here and there along just different edging and pick out the great thing too is if you're not happy with something, you can quickly wipe it off with your finger. So if you make a mistake, you can wipe it off and then cut and then redo it or or just get rid of it. 
because this takes a minute to dry or it takes a little bit to dry fully. And even though that the, this is kind of a thick pen, you can catch edges really well. See, like I even caught those bolts down in there. But this is what tells the your brain when the person's looking at it, this is what tells them that it was a chunk of metal. You know, it once was metal. And they're seeing all this shiny metal coming through. So then they're like, ah, it's like big rusty patina metal. So it's kind of cool. And this is a lot of fun just to play around with this technique alone, you know. And you can do this on latex masks. I've done this very exact same method on masks. But don't touch the chrome. Give it some a few hours to dry. It it is paint, so it's also the great thing is you you saw I didn't use any sealers or anything. You know you you don't need to seal your paint. So you guys should be drooling right now, like oh my god, I can use this on so many things. Now I'm gonna see all these rusty paint jobs everywhere. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's cool. And this is the final little touch. So you just spend as much time as you want aging your piece how you want it. And then once you get it there, this would be your your final final thing. And now when you turn him and you spin him, the metal catches the light. And you're just like, oh, man, that looks sick. Sick, bro. Yeah. And that, of course, I got to do underneath. But, oh, and I forgot all this. <laughs> I forgot the I'll do that later. This is the important part. So I forgot the back piece. I'll have to catch it up. But. That is how I do metal, all aged and patinaed and, and rusted out and all that. So that gives you guys a solid step-by-step -step look at how to achieve something that's considerably aged and, and old and, you know, rusty and been in the weather for some time and the cool thing is i'll have you know some of this patina rust uh, rust and patina coming down his skin you know because obviously it's gotten very wet so naturally i would you would see i just i have to lighten his skin a lot i don't like the skin the way it is i'm gonna lighten it up make him a lot more milky and translucent and freaky and then i'll have some rust and patina running down you know maybe even under the armor and whatever you know make them really cool creepy so guys that is tonight's monster jam demo i hope you guys learned a lot i hope you enjoyed tonight's little demo um it was a fun one for me i hope it was equally fun for you guys um how much time we got about five minutes we got five minutes so let's do like a couple questions yeah, since we actually we've... have uh, one question from shelly moss Okay, Shelly, thanks for the question. And they're actually asking about this metallic pigment here. Mm -hmm. uh, they're asking, uh, it doesn't eat into the latex when painting a mask? No, no. I've not had any signs of this. Probably because it's not ever directly touching the latex either. So uh, I know that paints with metal in them can do that, but you're putting just a little bit on and you've layered. This is such a, a layer process of you know it's not ever directly touching the the rubber so i haven't seen any problems with it yet so yes good question though thank you um any other questions no, that's good? pretty much it i just have a list of uh projects that people are working on right now uh let's it? check it out yeah yeah let's check that out hopefully you can read my chicken scratch let's <laughs> see what people are working on right now <laughs> i'm gonna share all your secrets 
Uh, let's see. What do we got? Where? Oh, so what is this? Working on working Norris on Nor- Oh, working. So Neo's working on a Norris spider head. Very cool, Neo. I hope that comes out great. That's a cool monster. Be sure to share that with us on the Monday Night Monster Jam Facebook page. Look for that. Share it. We want to see what you're doing. Sweet tooth, right? Uh, working on a 3D portrait or painting. What does that say? Uh, printing. Printing. Oh, 3D printing. Sorry. 3D printing. You think yours is chicken scratch? You see no. my writing. It's worse. Okay. So he's working on 3D printing. Neil Lef- Leffler working on custom... Action figure. Oh, action figure and cleaning busts. All right. Awesome. So this is cool because this shows what everyone's been doing while Monday Night Monster Jam is going. And I'm yapping at you guys. Stacy Rockefeller making sculpture of Chucky. Very cool. He's cool. Chucky. Love Chucky. All right. Shelly Moth pulling some masks. All right. So you're casting. Nice. And Rambo, Rambo 9111. Yep. Starting... Virginia Poe. Oh, Virginia Poe sculpt. So likeness, right? Uh, I think, right? Yeah. Uh, looking and JJ is looking to improve H four O rehauls with new weathering teeth, or no, text. new text, Techniques. new weathering text. Sorry, text. Sorry about that. <laughs> yes. Very cool. Very cool. So it's good to see what you guys are up to, since I can't see what you're doing, but um. Thank you for sharing everything you guys are doing. We appreciate that. It makes the show much cooler. It shows that, um, you know, which is what I thought from the get-go, that this would be fun to do. It's an awesome time for you guys to jam along with us and have a lot of fun. And that's what this is all about in the end. Uh, Sam and I appreciate all you guys watching, joining us, as always. Um, It is much appreciated. Uh, Again, can't do the show without you guys. Couple things real quick before we run and wrap it up. Do not forget we have a thousand subscriber giveaway coming up. And that is these lovely people right here. I'm gonna cast 10 sets, paint them all, and give them to 10 lucky winners. So we're looking to hit that thousand subscriber mark. We're getting close. I better start casting soon because we're getting close. Um, and if you know anyone that would like this show, please let them know about it. Um, it would help us out a lot. Share, share, share. Share, yes. share as much as you can, please. Yeah, share on your Facebook, your Instagram, if you don't mind. We would greatly appreciate it. Like and subscribe, as always. That helps us out. Um, we do have some special guests coming up down the road. We're working on that. Um, I have a lot more shows we're thinking of doing. And um, what is their news? If you want to catch more of Monster Night, Monday Night Monster Jam, other than Monday night, you can uh, you can join us on our Facebook page, Monday Night Monster Jam Facebook page. We have a great page there with over 600 people there now, and everyone's sharing some awesome work all the time, daily. It's an amazing place to stay inspired and see what others are doing. We also you can also catch me more of my craziness on my instagram page casey love designs i have that's all my my personal work you can also catch my paint work that i do for sideshow collectibles and collectible companies on my casey love paintworks page that's on instagram uh i have my facebook page casey love and of course this youtube show which is casey love monsters my website is casey love monsters and over there we have two spots remaining for my june 25th painting class two only two spots are left you better snatch them up quick if you're thinking about taking the painting class june 25th is my in-person instruction painting class where i teach you in person right here in this studio where we do monday night monster jam and it's the werewolf versus vampire busts You get 20 paint colors, free with the class, the two busts. What more can you ask for? Well, you do get me teaching you all day. That's a bonus. And uh, it's a lot of fun. And so if you're looking to paint some cool monsters for a day, join up. We're signing up. We got two seats left. And it's sold out. Um, 
If you have any questions about that, you can hit me up email or DM me or PM or whatever the hell. However you want to get a hold of me. Two spots left on my website. So you go to caseylovemonsters.com, go to in-person paint classes, and you can sign up right there. Okay, that just about wraps us up tonight. Thank you again for joining us. We will see you again next Monday for Monday Night Monster Jam episode 13. But in the meantime, if you're bored and you need more Monday Night Monster Jam, you can go back and watch all 11 episodes, which should take you a while. All right. Yeah, a bit, yeah. <laughs> okay, guys. Thank you, Sam. Thank you. Sam, want to say bye? No? Oh, yeah. Oh, bye, <laughs> okay, bye, everybody. Good night. Have a great rest of your Monday night. We appreciate you. Have a good one. Keep making cool monsters. We'll see you next Monday. Peace.